Welcome back from the break. You're still watching Life Stories. Thank you for being a part of the show. The month of September is the sickle cell month. And in this particular episode, we're going to deal with the sickle cell disease. Today on the show, we've heard the stories of the people that have been affected by this disease, the victims and some parents. Next on the show, we're going to hear the doctor's side of the story. Yes, doctor, what exactly is sickle cell disease? It's an, it's an enzyme in the hemoglobin. Mm. There is a switch mm. from a, a, no, a, a normal um, enzyme to an abnormal sickle cell enzyme mm. uh, in the red blood cells, mm. in the hemoglobin of red blood cells. Mm. So this causes a very big abnormality in the sickle cell, mm. in the red cells. Mm. Uh, it causes the sickle cell to you know, the normal sickle cell is a, a, an oval. Uh, the, the normal red blood cell. The normal red blood mm. cells. And an, an oval, mm. very elastic mm. uh, cells. And this carries oxygen from the lungs to the tissue. Mm. And then carbon dioxide from the tissue to the lungs. So that mm. we, we can exchange. Yeah. So it's very important. Mm. Uh, in the sickle cell, this, this abnormality, single abnormality mm. in, the, uh, in the chromosome of the red cell uh, causes the sickle, these red cells, mm. the oval cell, to sickle in some abnormal situations. Mm. It's a, it forms in, uh, from a normal oval uh, mm. shape mm. to a sickle. Oh, a that's sickle. why they call it sickle that's cell. Called, it's called mm. sickle. Mm. Um, Doctor, is this disease hereditary or...? It is a, mm. an hereditary disease. A hundred percent. A hundred percent hereditary. Mm. It's not mm. uh, infectious or anything. It's mm. inherited mm. from parents to the children. Mm. Right. At what stage does the sickle cell disease manifest? In the utero, we have so, so many hemoglobins. In the uterus, the child uses what we call fetal hemoglobin. Mm. And this is a very uh, active, highly uh, active uh, hemoglobin mm. because it can extract uh, oxygen when the oxygen is very low in the utero. Mm. And the child uses it during the, uh, the fetus when the child uh, when the, is in the womb. Mm. And then we have adult hemoglobin. That is when the hemoglobin we, you and me, ha, 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 have. Mm -hmm. um, this is, the fetal hemoglobin is switched off in about three months. Mm -hmm. And the adult hemoglobin, the child starts manufacturing adult hemoglobin mm -hmm. from about three months. And that's when the problem starts. Before three months, two to three months, child is still having his or her fetal hemoglobin mm. and he's okay. But the, after he has uh, the, the fetal hemoglobin decays in about three months and the child mm. takes start manufacturing his or her hemoglobin. In the case of sickles, a sickle cell, patient with sickle cell, they manufacture this abnormal hemoglobin, which is sickle cell mm. hemoglobin. Mm. So, doctor, isn't there danger? Doesn't that uh, bring about the need for people to check randomly, to check their babies? In fact, sickle mm. cell should be one of the things which should be checked mm. when the child in, uh, has been born. Unfortunately, in, new, in uh, sub sahara Africa, we don't have uh, neonatal uh, uh, screening, mm. which is in... Uh, U.S. and in uh, Europe, mm. there is neonatal screening. As soon as the child is born, they've got a series of things they, they screen. Mm. And sickle cell is one of them. Here in Uganda, we don't have it. We hope, we are planning, we hope it will come, but we are planning for it. Mm. Uh, but you see, <laughs> you know, laboratory, you know, techniques are very expensive. You, you cannot just plan for only sickle cell, we have to plan for other abnormal uh, things which can occur in children, which I won't go about because we are dealing with sickle cell. Mm. Mm. So, doctor, 
What should parents know about the sickle cell disease? Not only parents, mm. but only everybody mm. should know about sickle cell disease. Mm. Sickle cell disease has been with us, is with us, mm. and is going to be with us. Unfortunately, it has been a neglected disease. It's so the commonest inherited disease in Uganda. The commonest inherited disease in Uganda. What are the statistics? If you are to uh, take it by percentage, in, how you many see Ugandans? In inheritance and mm. inheritance, mm. there is a dominant inherited disorder mm. and a recessive inherited disorder. Mm. A dominant inherited disorder is a disorder you have uh, when you have only one gene. Mm. It's mm. a dominant, and you get this, this disorder. But a recessive inherited disorder is you have to have two genes mm. eh, to cause the disease. Mm. The, the inheritance of this uh, disease is a recessive type. Right? That is dangerous. So um, uh, the the child, the, the parents mm. of the child of the child with sickle cell should be having a gene in their blood. One of a sickle cell and one adult gene. The father and the mother are carrying. The, this sickle cell disease. Mm. These chances for because of inherited di disorder, a, a recessive disorder. Uh, I, I don't know. Under, you understand what I mean? Right. Yes, please. Uh, the inheritance is the chances for each pregnancy is that one in four we'll babies be having. Cell will be having the sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. One in four chances, you yeah, have chances, one in four will be having a normal blood. Mm. And two in four will be yeah, having curry carriers, mm. which you call mm. uh, uh, carriers. Mm. So, generally, what should everybody know about the sickle cell disease? We should know that uh, the gene carrier, the carrier, mm. is 20%, 20 mm. you know, general, general mm. but it mm. varies from uh, tribe to tribe. Mm. Uh, uh, we have, with the statistics we have been using are very old ones in, in the early 50s, in mm. the 50s, mm. where uh, we had the highest carrier rate mm. Mm. was in Bundibujo, in the um, Bamba, mm. and it was 39-40%. That's why the highest. But throughout the uh, Buganda, you know, Eastern and re rest, we, the average is 20 percent. Mm. So it means that two, uh, we have a population of 30, 000, 30 million. Mm. Yeah? We have 35 million. 35 million. Mm. It means that 35,000 babies mm. are born each year with sickle cell. Anemia that is in terrible. Uganda, mm. and the important thing we have known that it, the the earlier you diagnose the disease, the better, uh, the better, so that the child goes and be seen regularly, mm. regular, see, seen regularly uh, every two to three months. This has improved their uh, their survival. Mm. Um, I've had uh, patients who are now in the good employment. Mm. They are in their forties. I started mm. them off uh, about 30 years ago, 40 mm. years ago. Mm. So doctor, now that this is the sickle cell month, mm. you know, of course it has a significance. Mm. And so as we reflect, what, what, how are we supposed to help people with the sickle cell disease and how we're supposed to help our country when it comes to the sickle cell disease, Advocacy. right from the doctors to the society Advocacy to the government. so that people mm. know about the disease. Mm. Because these things come out of blue and say, I've never heard of it. Mm. When it is the commonest inherited disease disorder mm. in Uganda. Mm. Yeah? Advocacy, we should tell people uh, 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 about the disease. Mm. Then, <laughs> when you say advocacy, mm. 
then you have to have facilities mm. eh? where well, yeah, these people can go and be treated. Mm. Because some people, some children come from Guru, as far as Guru and Arua come to, to see, or they oh, even come to see me. Mm. Arua, they ring me up, can you go? and they travel uh, on buses, whatever, it means um, having these disease, having these pains and whatnot. Yeah? The government has, uh, fortunately, has now woken up. Mm. It built up the, the sickle cell clinic. Mm, mm. If you came here four years ago, you would you wonder, you wonder where, where we are operating. Mm. We have about 6,000, uh, more than six or 7,000 children on our register. And now we want to uh, computerize this uh, register and mm. see what has happened to these, uh, to these people and whatnot. Then you have to have a, a team. This is this is a multi uh, multidisciplinary disease mm. because it can affect the bones, it can affect the heart, it can affect the uh, the, 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 the the gut, mm. and it can affect the brain. So it, you have to have people who know what they are doing. Mm. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor, You're for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this very needed and useful information. Thank I know that people out there yes. have been listening, and I hope that they will take the sickle cell disease seriously because it's a real issue. It's a big oh. issue. Mm. Yeah. All right. Stay well, Doctor. Thank you. Well. Thank Take you. good care and stay Thank well. You. Thank you. It is not only the sickle cell disease that does not heal in life. Loss of a loved one does not heal too. Heartbreaks may never heal. Generally, we all hurt differently. But faith gives us a peace of mind in a world that is rather not perfectly peaceful. People with sickle cells are our brothers, sisters, sons and daughters. Anybody could have one, so go slow on the stigma. Besides, they already have enough pain. They understand more than anybody else how disadvantaged they are. So families and society, the least we can do is be there for them. You just heard from Professor Christopher Ndugwa here in Malago Hospital, an expert in the sickle cell disease. I know you know by now how big the issue of sickle cell is. The standard is we all have to go and check for this disease. You could be a carrier even if you don't have the disease and you need this information. The doctors are ready to help us. The help is available. The government is trying to put up facilities. But we as society have to be the A help. We need to help ourselves by checking if we have the disease or if we are carriers because the facilities are there for us. Otherwise, let's try not to stigmatize people with the sickle cell disease. They know more than we do how disadvantaged they are. So the least we can do is at least be there for them. If you have a workmate, somebody in your family, a schoolmate who has the sickle cell disease, know that they are vulnerable people and you need to help them, encourage them and be there for them. Because they can be important people, they can be very useful people to society if well monitored and helped, just like Professor Ndugwa noted. Thank you for being a part of the show. That was it on Life Stories. I'm Justine, your host. You can still watch the show on YouTube and give us more information and get more information about Life Stories on its Facebook and Twitter pages. You stay well.